Kovach, the Associate Program Director for the Blue Ridge Music Center. I'd like to welcome you to the discussion series of Place in the Band, Women in Bluegrass and American Roots Music. This series is part of a project by the Blue Ridge Music Center that began in 2020 to honor the 100th anniversary of women being granted the right to vote. A Place in the Band celebrates the triumphs and explores the struggles faced by women in bluegrass and American roots music. In this discussion series, North Carolina singer, songwriter, and social activist, Laura Lynn Dossett, speaks with women in the music business, including musicians and others involved in music management and promotion roles. Through these conversations, the women share their stories, talking about their role models, mentors, and inspirations, experiences with people they've worked with, issues they've encountered that are specific to women in the industry, changes they've seen over the years, and other parts of their own personal journeys that have helped them to be who they are today. These individual stories show us the collective strength and future possibilities for women in bluegrass and American roots music. I hope you enjoy the series and thank you for joining us. Hello, today we're talking with Kristen Scott Benson from her home in South Carolina, and lucky for us, she brought her banjo with her. From her early days playing with Larry Stevenson to her long career with the Graskels, Kristen has retained her just sheer joy and enthusiasm for all things banjo. She's the five-time IBMA winner of Banjo Player of the Year. She's a 2018 recipient of Steve Martin's Prize for Excellence in Banjo. And we just had a great conversation. My name's Laura Lynn Dossett, and this is Kristen Scott Benson. Um, have you ever experienced um, any b barriers or any unpleasantness or anything around being a woman in a kind of all male world? Yeah, um, man. Every time I get that question, I I I get a little bit nervous because I never want to be insensitive to the people that uh, to the women, you know, who have felt that a, a lot and and have felt those barriers and. Uh, you know, been in uncomfortable situations, but I think it would just be, you know, dishonest if I, if I didn't say no, you know, I have not had, um, any negative experiences, uh, being female. And, you know, I, I think we have to all be realistic. It's not this way anymore. It, it doesn't feel, I shouldn't say that either, but, um, you know, when I started and the first real job that I had was with Larry Stevenson. And that right. was in 1995. And um, if anything, being female was a huge asset. And and here is why I think it, it was such a, a big asset is because if at that point it was rare, really unusual to see, uh, unless it was Lynn Morris who was fronting her band or Lori Lewis, um, you didn't just see, a, a, you know, I was 19 at the time, so I'm going to say a girl uh, in a band with guys who wasn't connected in any way, um, you know, playing at these festivals. So I felt like it was a huge, looking back, I didn't think anything at the time. I just played. Like, it, it never crossed my mind uh, that it even was unusual. I was just happy and thankful to be doing it. It's more now that people ask about it that I can look back. And I think it was a huge asset because uh, if you saw 30 banjo players at that festival, probably you were going to remember me because I was the only girl. I was very young and I was playing in a band with all guys. So um, I look at peers my age who are equally or better uh, players and some of them haven't gotten the recognition that I've gotten. And I really believe that Part of that is because uh, anything that sets us apart and makes us memorable um, can be a good thing. And I had that. And, and it was just by virtue of uh, beginning to play when I was doing it. And there, you just didn't see it very much. So speaking of um, some of these younger bands that you're hearing, who are you hearing that you're excited about? Well, there are a lot of great bands, uh, particularly one young lady that comes to mind is Ainsley Porchock. I mean, she plays with the band Carolina Blue, but I've been seeing videos of her, not just with that band, but also with a young banjo player, Lincoln Hensley, and uh, the leader of the ETSU Bluegrass program, 
uh, Dan Boner. And I've seen videos of her with them and I've seen her with or heard her with Carolina Blue. She's so good. And, uh, is she a banjo player also? No, she's fiddle player. And okay, okay. Uh, yeah, and she's just, I think, a, just a perfect representation of how young ladies are thriving. There are really so many. I mean, if we just started looking through young bands, um, just about every one of them is featuring women now. And, you know, I just love to see that. And there are also, you have someone like uh, Sierra Hull who absolutely is a great singer, can front her own band, her own shows as a singer. But I would say still is primarily known as a mandolin player, not just a mandolin player who's made a living, uh, you know, playing mandolin in bands. I mean, she is a mandolin, um, you know, icon or whatever yeah. you want to call that. I mean, she's the just top tier musician as an instrumentalist. And there are many others. Uh, so I, I really just believe that, the tide has changed and uh, it. what I find, and this is what excites me the most when I'm around younger people uh, and younger bands, the ultimate goal for me, for women in bluegrass, is for it to not uh, even be noticed that we're so well integrated that it doesn't even, it's not a blip on the radar screen. And I find that with young bands because I've had a uh, few experiences just where as some of them are kind of funny and crazy, but well, I, I'll just be inserted into this group of very young people uh, who are out playing. It's just par for the course for them. And uh, right. they don't think anything at all about it. And, and I, I think that's really the ultimate goal. And I see that happening and I'm very excited about it. And I think it just, as with anything, it just takes time and, I'm just so blessed that even though I was uh, certainly not one of the first, I mean, you can talk to ladies who very much paved a path. So I can't say that I was a trailblazer by any means, but, um, you know, it was still rare when I got started and I just was spared any of the uh, awful things that you may hear about. I didn't have those experiences. So I don't know what to say other than I'm lucky and blessed. Well, that's wonderful. And it's not, there's no, no right or wrong answer to it. It's just, like you said, it was unusual for you when you started. And mm -hmm. so I was just curious to see if, if you ran, you know, ran up against anything that got in your way, but I'm glad, I'm glad you did. Yeah. And I think um, it's a credit to, to the, the guys that I traveled with, mm -hmm. uh, especially early on, because after you do it a while, you have a reputation and you, uh, you know, you're just, you have acquaintances and contacts and you've been around people in short bursts of time. But that first band that I joined with Larry Stevenson was uh, Bowie Beach and Matthew Allred. And of course, Larry, who hired me. So thank you for that, Larry Stevenson. But um, they were just so nice and, and so cool about it and just right. normal about it. And, you know, if anything, I feel like uh, those three guys kind of, established a really healthy environment for me. And I just assumed it would be that way. And it has been.